thinking you knew better than the other guys riding on back biting and get away with lies no matter what when you say bastille to a visitor you think what bastille day obviously though french people never say that <laughs> it's either 14 juillet or la fête nationale uh, i'm not going to bore you with a history lesson or a language one Instead, we're gonna go and have a perfect day in Bastille. You know, Bastille kind of gets overlooked these days. It's historic and all, and it's certainly a name that when you hear, you think of France. Bastille, by the way, is an old French word meaning a sort of fort with its own garrison of troops. For many Parisians, Bastille has a little bit of a trashy reputation. Maybe you've even seen tourist guides referring to it as a district of bars and nightlife. This is Rue de la Raquette, which is one of the main streets coming out of Bastille. It's full of bars and restaurants. It's a little bit more on the fast foody side. It's certainly one of the main spots where protests end up. You know those demonstrations that a lot of people outside France like to make jokes about? Well, those are a fact of life in Paris. <laughs> Bastille stays true to its legacy as a sort of working class hotbed, where the people can send their messages to the elites. So Bastille lives on in the imagination as the sort of place you go to say, F you to those in power. <laughs> Oh, this is going to drive you crazy. Boom, boom, boom. I want you in my room. <laughs> That's the song. There are places I quite like in and around Bastille. Like Le Bistro du Peintre. I love taking a morning coffee in this Art Nouveau interior that is so, so Parisian. For Parisians who live around Bastille or know it well, it has actually gone through quite a bit of transformation. How lovely for a bonjour from 1 million Oh, look at this wall. And I'm a fan of the clothing boutiques that have sprung up around Bastille in recent years. Rue de Charonne has an especially good string of them with lots of labels and looks that I appreciate. Although I can see in recent years it's become more about the brand names than the small boutiques that used to be. Place de la Bastille remains a good place for people watching. You get a big cross section of people walking by or coming out of the metro. And when it's sunny, you have options. An easy place to meet up with friends for a coffee. By and large, I don't ever really eat on the place itself, as the quality doesn't always match the prices. Sorry, I got distracted. In front of the opera, Actually, when you say the opera, people normally think of the Opera Garnier, that beautiful building um, in the 9th. But this, that one's actually not an opera. That's now they only hold ballets mostly there. So here is the main opera of Paris. Of course, the big monument in Bastille is this column. La Colonne de Juillet, commemorating the French Revolution of 1830. Oh, the history bit. Now, I said I wouldn't talk about it, but I can clearly see now that I have to, because you really need to see how it all fits together. The year was 1718. 
as you know, they stormed Bastille. In fact, the place was more like a luxury prison for the nobles. At different times, it held Voltaire, the Marquis de Sade, and the man in the Iron Mask. When the revolutionaries overran it, they found someone who tried to assassinate the king, one noble who'd pissed off his dad, four counterfeiters, and a crazy aristocrat. So the revolutionaries invented a fictional prisoner, a Count de Lorge, with a flowing beard supposedly incarcerated for 32 years. The French, as you can see, are big on national mythology, which is why we make such great movies. So this column marks the Trois Glorieuses, three days in July 1830 that put a new king on the throne, which is what this famous Delacroix painting is about. Personally though, I prefer the Bastille monuments that came before this column. Like, I think I would have preferred the elephant. Or maybe the lady with the breasts. After the Bastille was demolished, there was an unusual statue of the Egyptian goddess Isis with water flowing out of her breasts. But it was too fragile, and it was demolished. And in its place was what I think was the coolest monument that could have been. And it's a real shame that it doesn't exist anymore. It was the Bastille Elephant dreamed up by Napoleon Bonaparte. He originally thought of putting the Arc de Triomphe in Bastille, but decided an elephant would be better. A big plaster model was erected, which was later going to be replaced by a proper bronze statue. But the plaster model became infested with rats. And after Bonaparte met his Waterloo, the elephant project was abandoned. <laughs> Sorry. I do have a favorite lunch spot not too far away. This is an unpretentious and often busy cafe that is something of a neighborhood eatery. It's big, but at lunchtime you might have to wait a few minutes for a table to become free. And it has good staff, hearty food, and good prices. There are funky little shops around here. Talk me seriously! <laughs> And there is a cafe nearby that Parisians will remember from a cute movie from the 1990s. It was in this little movie called Chacun cherche son. <laughs> Chacun cherche son. <laughs> Chacun cherche son chat. Chacun cherche son. Um. One cafe that I really like is full of cats. <laughs> On the weekends, there is a line for this place. Okay, I may have my own cat. But there's something so nice about having tea while you're surrounded by stereo hurry. Corners of Bastille is its port. So this quiet corner in the middle of Paris. It's so peaceful here. <laughs> the only issue here is that at night there are a lot of rats. So, I mean, once Toby even killed one because they were just going like this. This is very pretty. Well, actually, this is really pretty in, in spring and in summer because these are all covered with, um, with roses and beautiful flowers. So many times before, so this place has good memories for me because I've spent a summer on a boat here. And it's an ideal experience having this as your surroundings every day. You can also get a small taste of Paris boating when you visit with a tour boat that goes along the canals. If you do find yourself down this way, you'll discover a little walk that Parisians have been keeping to themselves. Down the far end of the port, you can walk across this gangway 
through some bridge tunnels to the river. That's the time when we just don't need more words. I know where to go to have, you know, a party night in Bastille. To be honest with you, I'm asleep by 11. <laughs> Maybe not asleep, but I'm in, definitely in bed. So I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'm going to go and have dinner at my favorite place in Bastille. Beaufanger. Yep, you pronounce it Beaufanger, not Bowfinger. <laughs> The main thing I love about it is that it's a Belle Epoque restaurant. The food is Alsatian and seafood, which means I get to eat oysters. <laughs> it looks worse than it was. And after a Belle Epoque meal and a tour through Bastille's revolutionary history, it's off home. If you like this video, smash that subscribe button. <laughs> oh, I wish I had a better way out. <laughs>